like to introduce to the stage uh, Theo van der Sander, ASC. Uh, Theo is a graduate of the Dutch Film Academy, an award-winning cinematographer who started working professionally while still in school. Theo originally found his passion in stills photography, but moved quickly on to shooting rock concerts, uh, expedition documentaries, and feature films. After over 25 feature films and documentaries in Europe and around the world, Theo settled in Los Angeles. His critically acclaimed and iconic works include Blade, Cruel Intentions, Miracle Mile, Crossing Delancey, Once Around, Volcano, Out of Time, Tuesdays with Mari, and Homefront. Theo, welcome. Thank you very much, Academy. Thank you very much, IBC. And uh, Deliverance Creek was my first period film in the United States, more than 25 years after I left the Netherlands, where 10 of my 25 features were period films. I liked period films because you could always be bold in creating a new look that was specific for the story. Nobody could say it wasn't like that because they were probably not alive at the time the story played. The Livens Creek didn't start as a feature, but as a, as a double pilot uh, for TV, uh, for the TV series about the Civil War. Uh, it was shot in uh, 21 days on location in Austin, Texas. Warner Brothers uh, Studio and Lifetime, um, uh, the networks, decided to make first a TV film, a TV film out of the double pilot, but gave me only the finishing time for one, for one pilot, for one of the two. I had a specific look in mind. The only light sources at the time were sun, moon, candlelight, fire, but I wanted to use some bold urban colors like steel blue and chrome orange, but desaturated and translated in a muted uh, palette. By then, I had shot uh, about 50 uh, features with a complete film workflow and 10 features on film with a digital finish. When I switched from the hybrid film workflow to an entire digital workflow in 2009, I knew about the development of the Academy's encoding system, later called ACES, because I, was, um, I followed the ASC technical committee very closely. I was a member and I used the ASC CDLs in my work. Every new production, I would say to my DIT and post-production house, I would say, let's go ACES. Because I knew that one way or the other, it would give me back some control over my image. I saw ACES as a big playroom, where I could bring in any format to play with and get it out of that room unchanged. The room was big. 16-bit, 30 stops, dynamic range, and every visible color in the spectrum. But everybody said, uh, it's not ready yet, uh, too uh, complex, too early, except uh, uh, Photocam's color team uh, said, uh, why not? And we decided together to try on this production, on this production to apply an ACES workflow from acquisition to the final uh, format, the, um, the distribution. At this time, at this time, ACES was at the version 0.2.2, not uh, 1.0, but was then branded as the proxy ACES workflow. This required a camera IDT, not yet in the camera, and a display ODT with the ASC CDL um, um, workflow in between. So I could play and, uh, and make up my artistic um, choices in between. Uh, we believe that this was the first real production to utilize the Academy-approved proxy ACES. This was Photocam's plan. The camera feed was going to be converted to ACES log to their live color system called NextLab Live. And from that point on, uh, the ASC CDL is applied. That's where I come in and, and say, hey, this is how I want it to look. Um, the image would then send through an ACES ODT to the monitor to display it in Rec. 709, what is the normal uh, uh, format for that. Uh, Photocam would apply the same ACES log to the log C files from the cards, the Alexa cards, to create dailies in their next lab dailies facility, what is near the set and, and not in the facilities, was on location in Austin. Uh, and uh, with the ASC DCL look that I had uh, created uh, from the set, they created the dailies. Now, this seemed not too complicated. But of course, during my test and uh, the first, uh, my test day and the first two shooting days, 
my dit was struggling. He was good, but he was struggling. Uh, the colors, the contrast, and the density seemed to be on steroids. I mean, it was, uh, everything reacted very strong because it was so, it was so heavy. And, uh, and it took us two days to adjust. We redid the first two days, color corrections, and from that moment it fell, fell into place. Uh, we, we applied the desaturation what we had, and we could still uh, keep the, the strong colors that we had in, had in mind. And we, um, um, it, it gave us, the moment it fell in place, it didn't change. Everything that we did showed up in the dailies, and uh, it gave us a lot of confidence, and also the director, because he saw on the set really what we were doing. But more important, when I started my final color corrections, every shot showed up exactly as we had created it on the set. What was necessary, because the networks had given me only two days for the final color corrections, they had only given the time for one pilot and not for two pilots. Um, so I was in, in trouble. So one or two days for a one and a half hour um, uh, period piece with tr quite a complex uh, approach was not that much. If you compare it with Mad Max, who uses nine months for the digital intermediate. So it was not really a lot. Normally I, and normally, I lose already two days of color correction in the beginning just to damage control, to get my original colors back. Uh, but here, the right colors, the contrast and density showed up immediately. And I could start directly doing the just subtle adjustments, the adjustments which, we, which you want to do in the DI. You, you want to do the little adjustments and, and all this fantastic things you can do in a DI session, you want to do that as much as possible for the time given. So there were two days, not a lot. Um, so, um, uh, and, and thanks to the ACES uh, problem, I could indeed finish my work that, as I had imagined it in the short time that was given to me. The film got this year an, an ASC nomination for Best TV Movie, which I never would have gotten without ACES. The Living Squeaks had a complex period look on a very low budget and an extremely tight schedule. But if you know what you want, Aces is your buddy and can help you through the entire process. From pre-visualization to distribution, archiving far into the future, with confidence and without any damage control. Thank you. Thank you.